that. What is up, dudes <laughs> and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts. I'm keeping that in. This is the take. I don't care. It's 4 a.m. I'm tired as hell, but I saw this news, and I really want to talk about it tonight and not wait till tomorrow if I could. But uh, we have a new, like, weird, like, structure deck-ish vote thing going on, except it's just one card, but it is for a particular archetype that you want it to be for. So introducing the 2020 Create a Card project here. We're going to go into that. Pretty much the idea here is they give us 16 archetypes. Well, well, so there's three phases, apparently. We don't know anything about phase two or phase three yet, so we're just on phase one. Uh, phase uh, one, essentially, is they're going to give us 16 different archetypes with um, uh, that kind of go head-to-head -head in like a bracket style, right? So you go two versus each other, two versus each other, and they all continue up a bracket until you get to first place, until finally there's one left. And I guess that'll be the archetype that is guaranteed to get the card. Uh, and then I, I don't know what phases two and three are going to be for. Hopefully it's a little more specialized on what kind of card you want for that archetype, but we'll have to see on that. Um, but yeah, just looking at the archetypes, we do know what they are. I'm going to click on this little graphic here just to show you. All right. So this is long story short, we're just going to, oh God, oh God, that's too bad. That's not good. That's not good. Okay. So starting off with these, we're going to start off, we're just going to start up on A and work our way down to H. First off, we have the Weathers or Weather Painters versus Gradle. Now, I, I don't want to, like, well, whatever. I think Weather Painters are going to take this one no problems. I actually think Weather Painters actually have an okay chance at winning this thing. Um, I know they are, they are like an underlying fan favorite. A lot of people like them. With the right card, they could take a huge leap, I think. They're always one of those archetypes that has power, but they're slow. The speed is really lacking, but they have, once they get set up, they're very hard to take down. It's just getting there fast enough, so... Really interesting archetype. I like them. I think Weathers are going to get it. And Gradle, unfortunately, um, I think is one of the, the the lackluster ones. In fact, it might be the least appetizing one as far as the player base goes. But we'll see. I expect Weathers to beat them out. Um, but yeah, Gradles definitely need a lot of help. But they're interesting. They're cool. Next up in the B bracket, we have Dynamis versus Light Sworns here. Dynamis are always cool to me because they have access, even though they don't have their own extra deck monsters, they do have access to some pretty cool stuff. They can make Bahamut Shark pretty easily now, especially in Master Rule 5. They can make um, uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity, which is a very strong like negation slash you know removal card, um, as always. And um, they make some other cards cool. Uh, other cards too. They have access to like Cleefor, Genius, Water Monsters, like all that stuff. So they have they have a pretty cool card pool to take advantage of. They've always felt like one of those archetypes that like one or two really strong cards could really push them over the top uh, and push them into like a, a relative level. But I do think as far as the player base goes, not a ton of people will be voting for this, unfortunately. But they are the only they are the only pendulum archetype on here, and that is something to know. It could come up. And then there's Light Swarms. This is one of the front runners for sure. Light Swarms has always been one of the fan favorite archetypes. People always want Light Swarm support, even though it feels like every set. This is a weird one to me. Like, honestly, like a really, really weird one to me. We just got Chaos Space and the new Chaos, you know, stuff from, from Toon Chaos. We're getting the new Synchro Level 8 in like literally a week. Um, that's very good in that, in that archetype. You know what I mean? Like essentially milling four and choosing whichever one you want to add to your hand, any light or dark monster you mill, which is very strong. Um, so it seems weird, because it kind of seems like we've been getting a lot of Light Sworn support recently, and Light Sworn's already have a ton of support, and like there's a lot of generic stuff that supports them. Seems like a weird one to throw in here, especially if they win, it's gonna be like, come on, how much help did Light Sworn's really need? But still, nonetheless, I have to say, they are a cool archetype, <laughs> as much as I say like, come on, like. They are still a really cool archetype, so um, still, I don't know, it's one of those weird ones, but uh, one of those weird ones that doesn't really make a ton of sense, just because they already have so much support, but what are you going to do, you know what I mean? All right, moving on, we have the C bracket, we have Valkyries versus Insectors, this one I think won't even be close, I think Insectors will blow Valkyries out of the water, well maybe, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm off on that, I know Insectors are an old meta archetype, which always does have value, because there are people who played in that in that level, like uh, in that format, loved Insectors and will want them to have another heyday or at least have a resurgence into playability because they are an actual interesting engine with some not hard once per turn effects and maybe one card could push them over the top for sure. Um, but they're interesting to say the least. And Valkyries, Valkyries, they've been trying to support me. We, we've been getting more, we've gotten a good amount of Valkyrie cards. I think, I, I honestly think Insectors, even at this point, 
far better than Valkyries, which is weird to say because Valkyries are actually fairly new as far as being integrated to the game, but all the Insectors are so much older, but still, I think Insectors are there. I think Insectors will have more fan favorite uh, stuff. I think Valkyrie has anime power, but Insector has competitive power slash like relevancy power, and a lot of people still like them. They're like the coolest insect archetype you've ever seen so i think they do have some some uh, potential there in winning that bracket so yeah i would pick insector there so, so far we've got weathers light swarms and insectors taking the a b and c brackets in the d bracket we have sylvans and cyber angels this is another one that's interesting there's another one that could be really close in my opinion sylvans do have that meta power because at one point we did see sylvans be a very good like plant synchro like competitive deck that is very very good um but Cyber Angels have meta power, again, even more meta power than Valkyrie because I think Cyber Angel is like one of the best girls in anime with Alexis Rhodes and stuff, so a lot of people like that, a lot of people like the ritual mechanic, I do think there is some some interesting stuff behind Cyber Angel here, and they did just get, re like not recent support, but fairly recent support, like a year and a half ago, so that's fairly recent, um, so people may still be trying to like stack on, you know, uh, new support on top of that and keep rolling with that but I don't know I think oh, this one would be close if I had to pick one I think I would pick Cyber Angel I think the fan base overall would pick Cyber Angel over, over Sylvan but I would not be surprised by Sylvan I'm just going to say that but I would pick Cyber Angel okay Moving on to the E-Brag, we've got Fire Kings and X Savers to the guy who's been in my comment section talking up Fire Kings this could be a chance. Now, listen, I'm not giving a great chance to win this whole bracket overall, uh, the, or the tournament overall, but, uh, you know, it's interesting. And I think Konami is smart. Konami will use this. We'll talk, well, I'll talk about that a lot. Okay, Fire Kings, though. Fire Kings and X Sabres. X Sabres are probably the oldest archetype on here, especially oldest archetype that was meta relevant at some point. This was one of this was the best deck in the game at some point, I believe. Uh, you know, don't quote me on that because I didn't play at the time, but uh, I believe X Sabres were very, very good uh, a long time ago, 10, 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago. And Fire Kings were an interesting archetype. When they came out, they were actually pretty interesting. They had, you know, a little spark, but I don't believe they were ever like crazy, crazy amazing. Um, but still, I'd like to see that come back. They're a cool fire attribute deck that I'd like to see, you know, get another little, you know, nice card, like a really good card for them. Because they, they're definitely missing, like, some kind of engine card that, that you know, would really jumpstart their plays. That's something they're definitely missing because they are a slower archetype. And x Sabers, same thing. I mean, that's, that's a slow, I mean, because this is the oldest one on here, this is the, as slow as they come as far as all 16 of these archetypes so we they definitely need again like a, a support card that's really going to bolster up their speed get them to their plays faster turn one set something up turn one get to a, either a going second win condition or going first like disruption win condition you know something like that so yeah x saber is still pretty cool though um just because they are cool they do have that nostalgia factor and a competitive factor as well Moving into the F bracket, we have Fortune Ladies versus Hazy Flame. This is the first one that I would say has... Oh, no. No, it's not the first one. I was going to say... Never mind. <laughs> Fortune Ladies. Uh, this one is another weird one. Like, Fortune Ladies, kind of like Light Swords, like, kind of like Cyber Angels. You know what I mean? Like, just got support. Like, Fortune Ladies, last year in a core set, got how many cards of support? Like, a good amount. And then... Didn't they also get like like the Fortune Fairies, which is kind of like a, a branch off of this archetype? So really weird that they're already throwing this in there. Obviously, I think Konami noticed that this deck doesn't really do much competitively, or at least people aren't really playing it. Um, they're cool, but I don't think they're in any way like set up to be competitive in any way. But I do think they are a fairly nice like fan favorite archetype in terms of just how many people like them. And Hazy Flames are on the other side. This kind of fits into the same category as Fire Kings, Volcanics, like those fire attribute decks. It's pretty cool. I, I think it's always been a cool deck. You can definitely make some XE plays with them, which is pretty cool. Um, I honestly don't know that much about them. I don't know if they were ever really good. I know they were really good in Duel Links at one point, but I don't know if they were ever really good in the TCG. That's something I would have to actually look up. But this one's interesting. I think just because of like waifu power, I'm going to give it to Fortune Ladies if I had to pick. Oh, also I didn't pick up here. Oh man, it pains me to say this to the guy that's in my comment section talking like hoping for Fire King stuff, but I actually think X Sabres have a have a better chance of winning that. Just the nostalgia factor could push them over the top. Um which is kind of crazy. Um but yeah, 
So I would say X Saber and Fortune Ladies here, bot and bumping both of the fire attribute decks out of here. But who knows? I wouldn't be surprised if either of them won. I think they are fairly close there. Moving on, we have Mermails and Photons. Now, this one is wild. This is a wild bracket. Uh, Mermails, obviously, we've seen, we've seen Merlantians, um, you know, thrown into, you know, the water deck and, and be very, very strong. Keep in mind, this is specifically Mermail support, not Atlantean support or Mermail Atlantean support, not Deep Sea Diva support, none of that. It is specifically Mermail support if we do get it. Um, but still, a lot of people like the water deck. A lot of people don't like the water deck because now it's just become like a hand loop scam <laughs> like deck like it's crazy uh, but still i know a lot of people do like it and then photons this one was the other one with light swarms in my opinion that's just kind of like come on konami like you got to give some of these other decks a chance you can't throw something like this in here i think this deck being one a deck that is already has like a lot of competent tools to it combined with the fact that it's an archetype that is played by one of the main characters in uh, its anime series does not bode well like listen like okay like uh uh what's a good example like cyber angels will play cyber angels is another is not a good one but um i'm trying to think like valkyries are in the anime but it's done by like a one-off villain that wasn't even like didn't even end up being like the villain villain you know what i mean i mean like i guess technically he was the villain but like you know what i mean like he wasn't like that guy he wasn't that memorable he was part of one of the weaker seasons and fo and photons are like Man, one of the most main characters in that entire series, one of the most memorable characters of that series. I haven't seen it, but I do know that, like, uh, whatever his name is that plays Photons or Galaxy Eyes, whatever you want to call him, does play, is, like, one of the main, main characters in that series. And so, like, this one's, like, kind of seems unfair just for, like, anime power. So many, all the people that watch the anime are really going to be, at, like, voting for this one. So for this one, as much as I think Mermels do have, like, you know what I mean? Some following, and Mermails could beat 80% of these other decks. I do think Photon's going to take this one. Uh, that's what I would put my money on if I had to, right? So, interesting there, but still moving on. And the last one we have here is the H bracket. This is TG versus Frog. Uh, another interesting one, because we saw in the past, what, year? We've seen TGs get more support, like just TG like imports, as well as like... Uh, the Link Monster and the new Synchro and stuff. They got some new cards that are actually, like, not terrible for TGs. They're not amazing. They don't throw the deck into relevancy, but they are nice to see. Um, and Frogs. Listen, I got to give Frogs the edge here. I just do. I know TGs have more anime power, technically, but it's not, like, crazy anime power in the sense that, like, oh, man, you remember that one awesome duelist that played? It's kind of, like you can forget about it easily right but frogs have one cuteness factor two uh, like a past competitive factor they were multiple times one of the best decks in the game and they've only evolved since then they have totally awesome on the ban list and maybe they could combine this card co like coming for frogs with the fact that they released totally awesome off the ban list in some capacity like that would be pretty cool I don't know. Also, last thing I want to say, keep in mind, off in the H bracket, uh, they said specifically for this one as well, um, frogs, the frog bracket or the frog archetype here is frogs specifically, not uh, Paleozoic. Uh, and not saying it won't be a rank two monster that like could work with Paleozoics, but it, it, they said specifically it is not going to be a Paleozoic card counting as like ancillary frog support. It will be a frog card so that is pretty cool uh honestly okay so i'm gonna pick frogs on that one so if i go through the picks again one more time real quick i'm picking weather painters i'm picking light swarms over dino i'm sorry weather painters over gradle light swarms over dino mist insectors over valkyries uh, cyber rangers over, over sylvans x sabers over fire kings fortune ladies over hazy flame uh, photons over mermails and i'm taking frogs over tg now that's just the first round obviously they're going to keep going in and only one winner is going to be elected here if i had to put my favorites which ones i want to see just to finish up this video <sighs> okay if i had to put three three up there i would put number three i would put insectors uh, I know they do like some, they already even now can do some some like kind of degenerate stuff just because they don't have once per turns on a lot of their best effects, which is kind of crazy. And we have like Dragonfly off the ban list. Um, so that's kind of crazy, but still, it, it's still a cool archetype. I love the design and maybe if they made the right kind of card, it would steer the archetype in, the, in, a, in a less degenerate 
direction. You know what I mean? So that would be really cool. Always been a fan of them. Number two, I would probably say Frogs. Uh, honestly, I know it's a weird one. I know some people won't be happy to see this, especially if they played like through Frog FTK formats and stuff like that. I've always been a fan of Frogs. I love the design of the Paleozoics, and even though this won't be Paleozoic support, Frogs still just naturally work with Paleozoic, so Frog support will, in a way, be Paleozoic support. I love that they synergize. I love that they double as trap monsters, um, which is really awesome to me. And, yeah, I don't know. Like, they're cool. I've always been a fan of Frogs. I, I like they're slow. I like they're controly. Um, and I'd love to see what they can do from here. I've always said, like, one more monster for Frogs could be huge. One more main deck monster could be huge. So I would love to see that. And then the last one I'll say here as my number one option is probably Weather Painters. Um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird pick. I know a lot of people don't like Weather Painters, don't like the play style. But you guys know I'm a control style player. This fits right into my category. And I do think they have some strong, strong cards. They just need one like honestly one card could be so huge for them and i would love to see that really put them in a true rogue status that can top regionals and stuff not just get close i've seen we've seen multiple people get close to top in regionals but not actually make it and i think one card if it's the right card could do it and i would like to see that now there are other ones i wouldn't be mad about honestly i won't be mad about any of them seriously but uh, those are the top three for me. Obviously, guys, let me know down in the comment section below. If you could pick one archetype here, which one are you picking to go all the way? If you're going to you're gonna pick one, which one do you want to pull out of this thing on top? Whether you think it will or not, let me know what you're hoping for, okay? There. And that's going to do it for me here, guys. I know it was super late, kind of rambly. It's, it's four in the morning. I'm sorry. But thank you so much for watching regardless. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me in the future. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.